If somebody says to you, I'll meet you at that new theater, they might be talking about Grand and Olive, but you'd better make sure. As Ruthie Zell shows us tonight, when it comes to new theaters, St. Louis this year has something of a bumper crop. All I know are my orders. I don't want to know what you were doing there. Everyone got excuses. At the Gaslight Theater in St. Louis's historic Gaslight Square, it's opening night of Antigone. They are hurting me. Tell them to get their dirty hands off me. This is French playwright Jean Henri's 20th century adaptation of the classic Greek tragedy by Sophocles, and it launched the second season of the St. Louis Actors Studio in September of 2008. The theme of season two is power and politics. We chose that because this being an election year, although, it, it, as it turned out, none of the shows we were doing actually pertain to that, you know, narrow thing of elections or, or that type of politics. They more have to do with kind of power plays and power struggles. The actor's studio is part of a theater scene in the St. Louis area that is growing in size and scope. Just ask the actress who plays the title role in Antigone, St. Louis native Emily Baker. When I was in high school, I didn't even know that there were any theaters in St. Louis other than the Fox and the, the Repertory Theater in Webster Groves. And I didn't realize that other theater groups performed around town. And when I got back from college, uh, it was like a, a whole new door had been opened. And there were so many theater companies and opportunities as an actor because um, that's what I figured out in school I really wanted to do, that I was, I was amazed. You can really find a niche, or if you really like to kind of uh, spread yourself out and, and experiment in different forms and doing, you know, more abstract kind of theater or more realistic, you have those opportunities here now. But before we go further, it's worth a look back to 2007. Do I have room to swing? That's when a transformation took place that turned a decaying storefront on the 300 block of North Boyle into a theater that is now the Actors Studio's permanent home. 60 flexible seats and then permanent seat, about 30 permanent seats up in the balcony. Okay, so we're on the stage. We are on the stage, that's correct. Producing director so William Roth purchased this building to install both a theater and a restaurant right, next door. Interesting. His goal with the Actors Studio is a regional company with national impact. We are looking at bringing in actors and playwrights and uh, artists from all over the country and all over the world to participate here as well. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay. The Actors Studio is rehearsing and staging eight plays for its 2008-2009 season. One play is an original production, the result of workshops where actors, directors, and writers collaborate. There are currently as many as 20 St. Louis area theater groups performing seasons containing at least three or four shows. It's like restaurants. The more good restaurants, you get more good restaurants. If you have more good theaters, you get more good theaters. And Joe Pollock should know. The veteran restaurant critic is also theater critic for public radio station KWMU. Well, I think that the Kevin Klein Awards have helped a lot. And the Kevin Klein Award goes to... Gary Wayne Barker, driving Miss Daisy New Jersey. The Kevin Klein Awards are named for the Tony and Oscar award-winning actor who was raised in the St. Louis area. That's Klein handing out an award during his appearance as host of the inaugural award ceremony in 2006. They've helped bring publicity to all the theaters in town and given the theaters something to brag about that they have a show that won a Klein Award last year, and it helps them sell tickets. <laughs> Ticket sales were very good for this opening night performance of Killing Women by Hot City Theater. The company moved into a new home in the Kranzberg Arts Center, located in the Grand Center Arts and Entertainment District. It's great to see Grand Center really uh, make this area into something. It's been pretty impressive. It's just growing so much, and we're so glad to be a part of it. There's so much collaboration going on with the different entities in, in the area. Uh, it's becoming a destination for the arts, uh, a real destination that the St. Louis needs, a lot like other, th other cities have. So we're glad to be in the center of it. We'd like to think that we have a certain brand of theater that we uh, have to offer for Grand Center. So we're glad to be here. I'm only in the market for long, loud laughter. 
the same night in the Kranzberg Center's other performance space, the Spotlight Theater's cabaret series featured singer Tim Shaw and accompanist Joe Dreyer. They belted out works by the celebrated Broadway songwriting team of John Kander and Fred Ebb. I really think probably in the last two years the cabaret scene in particular has exploded. Um, we had a couple of great venues and then we got a workshop that came and, and sort of gave professional people an opportunity to learn about the art form as well as perform it and it, it just has skyrocketed in the number of people coming in from New York but also the number of local artists who have sort of found this way of entertaining um, to, be, to be different and to be really exciting to talk to an audience as themselves not as a performer in a show, a character in a play. Remember Joe Pollock's comment about good restaurants and good theaters? The West End Grill and Pub is the restaurant adjacent to the Gaslight Theater. Its walls are adorned with autographed playbills and publicity stills from decades past. As for the future, artists on the local scene say things are looking good. My husband and I have thought about leaving and kind of just trying to decide what cities would be good and truthfully, I mean, St. Louis is really up there now with, uh, with some of the other cities in, in the nation that have good theaters.